I hope you are all well in the mood for some more discussion. Um, I will just make a quick summary of yesterday to bring us uh, back in. It was uh, 100 of us in the morning and more than 50 of us in the afternoon talking about the current state uh, of film education uh, in the region. Mm, we discussed different aspects of film education and how we can maintain the continuity uh, of it now that our re realities are changing. We talk about quality, funding, partnerships and the digital world. We discussed some new opportunities that uh, online platforms are bringing, especially um, the accessibility and also wider uh, reach. We ask ourselves, might film education become marginalized in the new reality now that the pandemic is bringing so many other challenges that we have to face as a society? But I think at the end, we always came uh, toward uh, trust, mutual trust that we have built through our long term relationships with our audiences, schools and teachers and also other partners. So today we move um, forward and uh, we will discuss how can we design sustainable film education programs, models uh, and build strategies that will bring us long term uh, impact. By doing this, we will also uh, spotlight the importance of the education system, which is vital uh, for providing equal access to film education. Um, one of the elements of sustainable models and long-term strategies is also professional training. We need to train cinema people and we need to train education people about film and cinema. Therefore, we will start our day with a presentation of a mass open online course known also as MOOC with a title Film Education, a User's Guide. It was developed within the European project frame, uh, from Framework to Impact for educators working in film or media um, education to broaden their knowledge and expertise um, in film literacy. Uh, it had perfect timing as it started at the very uh, beginning of the pandemic, offering a continuity in film education training. I believe that quite a lot of people from Slovenia and Croatia took part in it. So most probably some of you already know it as an active participant. But nevertheless, we will try to discuss more about it also in the perspective of a long term impact on film education. So you are all very welcome um, also today to ask your questions in the Q&A uh, section and in the discussion that I will have with Ian. We will bring Anya in uh, and she will tell us, uh, she will um, uh, throw with us uh, some of your questions. But first, let's hear about it uh, from Ian Wool, one of the authors and editors of the course and education director at the Film Space based in the UK. Ian, a very warm welcome. And the screen is yours. Thank you, Ziba. Am I on? I hope so. Can you see me? Yes, we yes. can. Yes, okay. Now, get you, yes. Okay. Right. Good morning, everybody. Um, and I wish I could be in Ljubljana. I've been in that wonderful cinema where Mark Reed and I came across two years ago, it must have been. But anyway, um, here we all are in this strange time. Although well, it's fantastic to see that there are 85 of us gathered here. Um, and I wonder if we'd have had quite so many people if we'd have been doing it live in a cinema. So there are certain advantages. Anyway, off we go. Um, let's look at the PowerPoint. Um, so, slideshow. Oh dear. What am I doing wrong? It's cool. Ah, there we go. Excellent. So here we are in Ljubljana in a virtual way. And looking at the idea of the MOOC and the website that has emerged from the MOOC. Um, as Ziva just said, this is part of the project Film Education from Framework to Impact. Um, and the key creators of the, the MOOC itself, BFI, Danish Film Institute, Vision Kino in Germany, Cinematheque Francaise, Francaise, and Carpos from Greece. So, as you've said, it's a mass open online course, and it's part of, um, it, it's 
sent out via FutureLearn, which used to be part of the Open University here in the UK. And FutureLearn offer courses from everything from film to biology to psychology to literature. So we're part of a big, big mix. And one of the key things about reaching an audience is publicity and promotion, as you well know. Um, and we're really pleased that, certainly for the first run, just how well publicised some countries uh, managed, how much publicity some countries managed to get out. Anyway, onwards. There's the course and its homepage. Um, it runs four weeks, four hours a week, roughly. Um, so how did we start out on this? We proposed that we were going to do a MOOC and also that that would become a website and that we would do these regional seminars. But really, it was a, a complete blank space as to what would be in it, how we would do it and what our aims were. So the first thing we did was to ask the practitioners. And we did a Europe-wide questionnaire asking what actually is happening in film education at the moment. And we asked organisations to give us their mission statements. Uh, what did they believe they were doing for film education? I would assume that most people here today would recognise most of those. Um, critical understanding of film, the art of film, uh, experience, reflect, understand, engage. And I think the key one at the bottom, which was raised yesterday, is sustained and accessible work. That's what people wanted to do. But we also noticed some glaring absences. One was to do with teacher training. Uh, one was to do with creating films with young people. And the last one is, is kind of a tension, I suppose, a kind of clash between film education and learning with film, using film as a stimulus for within other subjects. <coughs> so how did we get to developing the MOOC itself? After the questionnaire, we held a seminar in Copenhagen to discuss what the content could be for this course. And between January and June 2019, which seems a long time ago, uh, we started to develop an outline which was discussed at meetings in Berlin and in Athens. Those happy days when you would get on a plane and, and fly somewhere. Um, and it was took us about five months to actually construct the course itself, to write it, edit it, get all the visual materials together. Until eventually in March 2020, the MOOC went live. And since then, over four and a half thousand people have completed the course and probably about two and a half thousand of those are in Europe because the future learn is picked up all around the world. Um, and it's quite interesting to see some of the non-European countries that, that have signed up. India, for example, is a particularly big uh, participant as are teachers and uh, shall we call them learners from Egypt and the Middle East. So we started, as always, as, as Mark said yesterday, from the framework for film education and that famous page, which sums up everything that we wanted. And that, that was kind of our, our basic structure um, with those three Cs, the critical, the creative and the cultural. And those were the three areas that we wanted to define and look at. So that was the final structure that we came up with, defining film education, choosing watching and talking about films. Um, how do we choose what we show our, our students? Um, we looked at film analysis, filmmaking, and, and something we, which really threw up quite a kind of positive reaction, um, which is film education in preschools. And, and that was mentioned yesterday. Um, and that, that generated an awful lot of interest. And then we wanted to go out to a wider view, and I think that, that, that might well uh, be an area that applies to many of you, was to look at the idea of cinema as a key component of film education. Um, and then finally, um, evaluation and impact. What work was carried out on evaluation and impact? 
Um, and we'd, we'd raised that issue with our, in our survey. And we discovered, in fact, that evaluating projects, looking at the impact of projects, looking at the impact of film education, we're not very good at doing that. And it's something we might need to spend more time looking at. So that gives you an idea of a typical page. That's week two. And you can see that it's all broken down into various steps. Some are introduced by a video. There are articles that people can download so that they can read those at their own leisure. Um, it, as I said, it's over four weeks it takes to, to complete the course. Each week is divided into 13 steps, which is an introduction. Then there are tasks that we set um, the learners. There's a discussion area. Um, we were about seven or eight of us were going on on a daily basis, moderating comments, um, provoking discussion and reacting to comments that have been made. And the great thing about the MOOC is you can complete it at your own pace. We had some people who did all four weeks in about three days. Other people took slightly longer. Um, there's an example. So you've got a video step at the top, which is the key video that we used in uh, film analysis. This was done by Danish Film Institute. Um, and you can see in the introduction, we raised the issues that are going to be dealt with in that step. And then you can see at the top there a task so that people are engaging and becoming involved in what is happening as opposed to simply just reading and digesting information, which is obviously what you're doing now. I should have made this a bit more interactive. Um, one of the key things is, is the discussion area where people are discussing, I suppose we could say, um, interacting with each other, raising ideas, making suggestions. And um, there's only so much you can do in four weeks. And what was fantastic was the way that people did engage, suggesting other films, suggesting other methodologies, raising questions which other course members would attempt to answer as well as as the moderators and we looked at the feedback and the first thing we wanted to know was who was actually participating in in this course uh, and what was great to see obviously there's a, a major um participation by secondary school teachers uh, but it was fantastic to see that there are a number of people in cinemas people who ran workshops and the larger institutions who are also participating because we were uncertain of, of our audience, shall we say. We assumed it would be mainly teachers, but in fact, it was great that these other um, groups joined in um, and, and offered their expertise and opinions. We asked people what they'd like next, which is always a, a, a danger, I suppose. Um, and you can see at the top, um, practical work was a key area, making. And that goes back to what we discovered in our initial survey, that um, there was this lack of, of guidance about filmmaking. Uh, and also teach training programmes for film analysis. Creative work comes up again. And another one up in the, the kind of top area is that people would like networks so that they can just as they discussed um, certain topics within the MOOC, um, they wanted that to continue and they wanted networks, be they national, region, regional, globally, uh, pan-European or whatever. Um, and the other thing that really surprised us, um, going back to our film analysis section with, with the Danish Film Institute, uh, was how surprised people were that we were suggesting using short films. Uh, we assumed wrongly that that would be common practice, but in fact it wasn't. So there was a desire to have a selection of, of short films, film extracts, I suppose usable chunks of film for a kind of 40 minute, one hour lesson uh, to be backed up by teaching resources. Um, we were surprised that, um, Right down, not 
quite at the bottom, but was a selection of feature films being made available online for use in the classroom. Um, and as Ziva said, this went out first time during those initial lockdowns that were happening all across Europe. Um, and we heard yesterday about some of the, the tactics that people use to, to run festivals with online delivery. Um, so we were surprised about that. But anyway, there we go. Life is full of surprises. Um, how do people want to receive any training in the future? They like the idea of a MOOC, websites, print materials seem to be going out of fashion. But of course, unsurprisingly, it is that face-to-face -face, uh, workshop where you're working and interacting with people that um, was up there uh, with over 60% of people wanting that. Um, so we realised that the, the kind of MOOC has a finite life and we wanted to ensure that the content um, went on for longer than that because one of the comments that came up was that some people couldn't do the MOOC because their English wasn't good enough. Um, and alas, everything that's on the Future Learn site has to be in English. Um, so we felt that a website we could produce in as many languages as, as possible. The other thing about a website is that we could include more interactivity in some of the tasks. Um, you can't really do that on, on uh, a future learn MOOC. It would also allow users to choose the sections that they wanted. Um, and it, it therefore offered more varieties of possible uses. And we, we thought that actually a, a website would, these are some of the people or the audiences that we thought we could address via a website so that people could use it as part of in-service training for teachers in schools, the various sections that they felt were relevant. Again, in particular, given, given the interest that was shown in service training for educators in kindergartens, an individual teacher could work their way through the website in the same way that they could within a MOOC, that it offered possibilities for university teach training courses, and it offered guidance in specific areas of film education. So any country that wanted to shall we say, translate the, the website into their, their own language, um, could, should they want, translate all of it or some of it. It was completely up to them. That gives you a sense of what the website looks like. Um, here you can see a kind of typical piece of interaction that we introduced, which was looking at sound, where you can break down and listen to, sorry, it doesn't work on here because I'm always wary of, of interactive stuff on a, on a Zoom call. But you can analyze and, and break down the sound so you can hear how the sound, soundscape is actually constructed. Um, and again, here you can click on the thumbnails and it identifies what's going on, how an emotion is, is created. You can make that further interactive, I suppose, in the classroom where the students would, would add um, their own comments to each thumbnail that appeared. So interactivity, I think, is, is the way forward. Um, here's an example for, on the practical work, uh, which was done by Cinematech Francaise. Um, and here we actually asked teachers or participants to post their own um, one minute movies. So people are encouraged to go out and do their own filming, post them, share them, comment on them, um, and therefore get an idea of what other people are doing, which is important. So in moving the website into the world, so to speak, um, it's currently in English, German, Estonian and Lithuanian. We hope um, that there may well be a Croatian version and a Spanish version. That's so far. The great thing is at any time we can add additional versions of the website. Um, I put there goes live in December, January. We're hoping it will go live within the next week or two. Um, 
and therefore we'll contact everybody when that happens. And we can do it in any language at all, uh, as I said. So that's kind of where we are. That's, that's what we wanted to do. Uh, it's proved to be very popular, excellent feedback on everything. And as always, when, when something is popular, there is this kind of demand for more. Um, and let's see what can be done via Creative Europe, of which, of course, the UK is no longer part. Uh, but we won't go into that. Anyway, that's my email. Contact Mark or I uh, for any further information. And I'll stop sharing my screen. There we go. Any questions? Any comments? Thank you, Ian. Um, we'll bring Anya in. I don't see questions yet. So if anybody has questions, please go into the, into the Q&A uh, section. But uh, maybe I can start. Thank you for your presentation and also for all the insights. Um, I think it's very interesting that um, the insights on the um, people participating, I think it uh, really reminds us that we shouldn't forget about the cultural sector, the cinema sector, who also needs um, training possibilities and educating um, ourselves. Because I think when we are talking about um, cultural education or film education, a lot of people just assume that cinema people or film people know everybody, but I think it's really the synergy of it. We have to work together and learn together to bring the quality um, uh, film education. So I would just encourage us all because the audiences now that you were mentioning at the end, you were mainly focusing on edu educating uh, education sector. So maybe we should also um, the cinema people we should not forget. But my question is, um, um, you said that the starting point was the research and I probably the um, the research showed a lot of differences uh, between um, different countries also in understanding the the film education we don't even actually use the same words we film lit literacy film education in Slovenia we are talking more about uh, upbringing so I was wondering wondering how challenging it was to make a course that is um, relevant across Europe how did you design the topics and um, yeah, it, it was constructed by Europeans. It wasn't just two of us sitting down and saying, oh, okay, what should we put in? There were, as I say, there were three seminars um, where we debated content. Um, part of it actually re revolves around what's available because just to have print would be, be disastrous. So it was what visual material did we have? what could we reasonably assume we could do within four weeks? So, for example, many people were posting up saying, you've done a brilliant piece of work on analysing short films. How do we analyse feature films? You've done great work on making films that last one minute. How do we develop students um, to make their own three-minute, five-minute, ten-minute film? Uh, not ten minutes, it's far too long. Student films are often far too long. Um, how do we get promote or, or not promote, but how do we get children to think about the topics they want to, to make films about? So there's, you know, this is step one. It's an introduction. It, it's us focusing on, I would say, some ways of approaching film education. And I think you're quite right, Ziva. There is this issue about, and it, it goes back to what Mark was saying yesterday. Um, so perhaps we've got to turn the telescope round again. We, we were focusing on, on the teachers in the main, although that there are sections for about how can cinema become a classroom. And we need to get that link going about what teachers want, um, what cinemas want and what cinemas can offer to make realistic offers. And I think to, to come up with sustainable, again, that was a word that was used so often yesterday, and it was used in the survey that came back, sustainable models. And in fact, there was a pattern that emerged across Europe, which was the difficulty of sustaining projects, uh, the problem of always chasing money for projects. This was particular with, with kind of smaller organisations that their aim was sometimes 
their aim and their their kind of mission statement had to change because that's what the the funders of a particular project wanted so it wasn't we're always doing what we want to do it's we're doing this because we have to do it in order to survive and it is that sustainability of organizations and also trying to get a sustainable method a sustainable presence within the school curriculum and i think the other thing that that has emerged um is inclusiveness that all too often projects relate to and attract children and young people who are shall we say already involved in film mm. and we're not spreading and we need to be aware of of the children i mean i think it, it was a, a colleague in in lithuania who stressed the fact that we're not getting to the children and young people who have no access to culture not just film culture but any culture mm. And that is a real challenge for all of us. You can call it from a cinema's perspective, audience development, mm. but it's cultural involvement. Mm. And I mean, I think that's been really highlighted by, we're all going online. A lot of people are teaching online, seeing films online, a lot of people. There are some children and young people who have no laptops, yeah. um, iPads, oh, other, other, tablets do exist um no broadband so there we go there's some questions and also we think about um teenagers i mean they are um uh, born in, into this digital era but uh, not necessarily they know i mean they're like media or uh, internet uh, literate so it's also this aspect i think we have some questions so maybe we can bring anya in and um, just go ahead. Hello, everyone. Uh, so we have quite a few questions. And the first one would be from Uros. Uh, so we were talking about uh, different participants involved uh, in the program. Uh, and his question is, are there any film professionals from film industry involved, like directors, screenwriters, and how? Right. So the answer to that is very simple. No. Um, and I think that that is a really interesting, um, it's a good, very good question. Some of the projects that are highlighted do use prof professionals. They will use directors. Um, but it, it, it's a key area that it, it is, should be studied and isn't studied, which is the whole idea of, of the film industry itself. I think when it comes to using professionals, there's a real challenge there. Is it going to be a wonderful one-off, hurrah, you know, we will come to the cinema, we will meet a film director, and then we will go home again. It was a wonderful thing that we may or may not remember in three weeks' time. Um, or is it trying to get professionals involved in teaching? And then the challenge is to make sure that the professional doesn't take over. The professional has got to respect the children and young people and what they're trying to do. And I've seen it all too often that the professional moves in, says, no, you don't want to do it like that. You've got to, you've got to do it like this, or you must, you should do it like this. That's not helping the children learn. So when we use professionals, we need to think very carefully how we use them. So it's a question of us learning from them as teachers but also them learning from us about how to engage with, with, with children and young people. I know there weren't any professionals involved. That could be an interesting course. Now that you were talking about professionals, you meant the film industry people, like directors and... Um, yeah. I, I, I would argue that um, all too often when we talk about the film industry, we only talk about production. But I think, you know, you have many countries run young film programmers programs, which is an interesting way of thinking about attracting audiences, let young people program for young people. Mm. I think there are lots of, of great activities you can do about film distribution and film promotion and 
creating audiences. So I think we ought to look across the whole range of the film industry, not just those wonderful film directors that we all love. Yeah, sure. One of the programs that we have is exactly about that um, young people uh, making a, a festi film festival for young people. But I think we had some very nice, actually national programs and national initiatives in Slovenia where the combination between uh, professional artists and um, educators um, uh, brought some really nice results because in art you have, it's more about the dialogue also and it's also about creating and you know, there are no right answers. So I think it also depends which professional you find because you also have educators who think that this is the only knowledge that we should share so i think we should all think more about about the dialogue creativity and and culture and participation and also listening to young people what do they have to say and from which starting point point are they they coming um so i just, I just see i just found a piece of paper on my desk which follows up with what you said uh, there are no right answers. They're just the right questions. Yes. And I think it's, it's that sense of questioning dialogue that is, is vital. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anya, some more questions, I see. Yes. Uh, so um, you were talking about localizing the web page. So beside the translation, uh, this is a question from Elisa. Would it be possible to customize the website contents, for example, films and extras on the web to different cultural contexts? Ooh, um, if you've got lots of money, yes. Um, you know, budgets are always tight as we are or restricted, as we all know. Um, so the answer to that would be no within the website. But again, using the website as a start, because the analytical part only focuses on one short film. So using the website as a starting point one could then start introducing within your training um, films that are more localised. And I think considering that the film that we use and focus on is from South Korea, um, it's quite an interesting challenge for, for students to come to terms with that. Um, so, yeah, you, we can't overly, we can't change the content of the film that's studied, the challenge that's set from... Uh, the practical work, um, but you need to be a bit clever about how you follow up what you see on the website. More questions, Anya? Yes, so we have uh, two questions from Croatia, and the uh -oh. first uh, would be from Martina. Um, she's asking, uh, with whom are you collaborating on translating the page in Croatian? Is it Film Centre or anyone else? If I remember correctly, it's the Film Centre. It's Juris, who was here yesterday. I'm not sure if he's here today. So, and the other question from Croatia is from Ivana. Um, and uh, she is congratulating the number of people who finished the course. And she's asking if it is possible to see the participant structure by countries. She's asking because she's a part of the seventh continent and they were trying, uh, they tried through their huge base of nursery and primary school teacher to promote the course, but they haven't seen much uh, response from these groups. So, um, and also she's interested in what was the percentage of answered questions, re questionnaire rate, since all findings were based on 92 answers. Right, very good. Um, I can tell you now that Croatia was number three in the top 10 countries for participants. Uh, the UK was, was top simply because it's in English and it's more easily available. Germany was second. This is a bit like the Eurovision Song Contest. Germany was second and Croatia was third. There were nearly, there were well over two or 300 people from Croatia. So and Slovenia was in number, it, it was in top 10, which it never was. happens. It never happens on uh, Eurovisia. So that's a different. Okay. Yeah. Some people have been looking at the, the, the top 10, but no, it, there was, um, but Croatia was very strong. And it, it goes back to what I was saying earlier 
about promotion and publicity. And the more that organizations within a country promoted the course, you could see that reflected in the number of people who signed up. So well done, Croatia. Uh, so and yeah. Slovenia, sorry. <laughs> So, um, and then we have another question from Errol um, from DocuFest, and he's asking if you could share the evalu evaluation, sorry, methodology, the questionnaires, since they are starting the evalu evaluation of, of, our, of their own program. Um, so, any examples would be very helpful for them. Yeah, uh, that's not a problem at all. If he emails me, um, I can send him the, the questionnaire that we sent. Um, and the, the interesting point for the previous question, sorry, um, was how can we base our, our findings on 92 responses? Um, we eventually got up to 100. Again, it's a budget issue. But on the survey monkey that we used, you'll notice there are 10 questions and we can only accept 100 answers because okay. after that you have to pay a lot of money. So that's why. It's all to do with budget, as everybody knows. Okay, I think we are running a little bit uh, on time, short on time, so maybe we can uh, finish it here. Um, Ian, would you like to, I don't know, end the, with some thought about the, I don't know, uh, ideas on the future uh, of online um, training um, or well, all, I, all I would say is, I mean, I think online training is incredibly useful. Uh, whether we would go down the MOOC method again, now that we have a website that has already got one training session on, uh, one suggestion has been that this is the last of the four regional seminars. It would be great to have some of the content from all four regional seminars up on the website so that it's shared across Europe. And to me, sharing is, is a key aspect, cooperation, sharing of experiences, sharing of knowledge. Um, that's what Europe's about. Mm, mm. There we go. I won't cry yet, but I will cry soon. Yeah. So I should, Again, I'll try to answer some of the other questions. Perfect. You can go into the Q&A section and just oh, try well. to answer them. That would, be, that would be perfect. Again, we heard so many uh, buzzwords, keywords, uh, sustainability, funding, um, sharing, partnership. So let's move forward to uh, the second part of our morning session. Thank you, Ian, for you. Uh, all the insights. And, and Ian will be staying with us throughout the day and he, he will be so kind to do a wrap up to uh, after the afternoon uh, session. So already, thank you for, for that. So now we will look um, into three different case studies, three different um, attempts already existing sustainable uh, film educational uh, models. We will start with Sanja Jovanovic from a Film Center in uh, Montenegro. Hey, Sanja, I'll just tell, uh, mm -hmm. uh, just stay here and I'll just go uh, through the all three panelists. Uh, she will present the current situation with their national strategy and share some insights on viewing habits of young audiences. I'm really looking forward to that because I think we need some research uh, data as well. Um, I will be talking about uh, some necessary uh, building blocks of a long-term film education and present you some achievements and challenges of film education in Slovenia. And afterwards, we will uh, hear about the sustainable model um, that already exists for quite some time. Charlotte Gies from Danish Film Institute will present their journey from a vision to a long-term program uh, with a nationwide reach. So, Sanya, it's your turn. The, uh, not floor, the screen is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Jiva. Uh, I'm so happy to be here with you today. And I want to thank you again for inviting me to share Montenegrin experience uh, on our journey to uh, towards the sustainable uh, national uh, strategy for film education. Uh, so let me share my screen. Um, okay, here it is. Uh, so. 
First, uh, I want to say something about the current state we are in. Um, obviously, uh, the Film Center of Montenegro uh, was established in uh, 2016 uh, with the aim of making uh, proper conditions for development of Montenegrin cinema and Montenegrin film industry by investing in film production and complementary film activities, uh, but also by fostering the development of film audience and by spreading the film literacy. Um, in 2018, the Film Center with Ministry of Culture created uh, a document uh, called the National Program for Cinema, uh, Cinematography Development uh, 2018 to 2023 uh, that was adopted by Montenegrin government. Uh, and this uh, document uh, specifies the goals uh, that have to be achieved during the period with uh, a specific, uh, specific set of activities. And uh, in this document, the importance of uh, film education and the creation of the strategy for film education is emphasized. It is uh, stated that uh, film education is essential in the development of younger audiences. It is important to provide film education both within the curriculum and through extracurricular activities. Uh, within schools, uh, the goal is to bring uh, films closer to younger audiences by discovering and uh, discussing films and uh, through their analysis. And outside uh, of school, a uh, shift can be made in several directions. Uh, the first one is encouragement of film practices, uh, like organization of special workshops with the aim of training young people in filmmaking, creative writing, directing, etc. And the second one is uh, by nurturing the film experience, uh, which is uh, organized cinema going. And so uh, what we did so far? Uh, well, from the beginning, we were focused on networking and experience exchange with institutions and organizations from the region, uh, like Croatian Audiovisual uh, Center or uh, Kinotvor, uh, and uh, with organizations and institutions in Europe. Also, uh, the insight into the statistics uh, and the data gathered by Audiovisual Observatory and EFARM in particular were of great help uh, because uh, it provided us with the trends in different national strategies. Uh, so, uh, last year, uh, the center started with open calls for support for complementary cinema activities and uh, many, uh, many projects were uh, supported, like educational workshops um, uh, for uh, high school students, the creation of a film textbook for children in elementary schools, uh, the festival of films for children, etc. Uh, but um, during previous years, many uh, film festivals uh, like uh, Underhill Film Fest, Cinema Festival, uh, and Podgrisa Film Festival, uh, they all, uh, all organize uh, educational workshops for, uh, for uh, high school or uh, elementary school. And uh, uh, European Film uh, Academy Young Audience Award uh, is also organized every year in Montenegro, and we have uh, fully crowded theaters uh, and uh, Montenegrin Cinematheque, uh, which is creating various programs for schools in cooperation with uh, Kavno Cineplex uh, in Budva. Also, uh, the Film Center um, organized the support for Films for Children for the first time last year. And the project that was awarded also received award in Kids Kino Industry, and it, it, it is being developed through Kids Kino Lab uh, this year. And uh, what are we uh, really proud of is uh, the project of digitization of the film theaters in Montenegro. Uh, the Film Center signed last year uh, uh, agreements with four municipalities in Montenegro uh, uh, about digitization of the film theaters in those cities. Uh, and uh, by uh, these agreements, uh, Film Center is securing the diversity of uh, future film repertoires in those uh, cinemas. And also, uh, it is securing uh, the collaboration between these theaters and uh, schools in these cities, 
uh, to organize uh, with other institutions and organizations uh, various workshops for uh, schools. Uh, so uh, there are various projects that are ongoing, uh, but uh, this is all happening without a proper wider plan. Uh, what we wanted to do uh, before drafting the national strategy is to see um, uh, where we stand in terms of our young audience and their viewing habits. Uh, hoping that the findings will lead us to the points uh, to which we had to pay attention. Uh, we um, so we also commenced uh, commenced another research uh, for the second part of this one, uh, which is dedicated dedicated to uh, teachers in schools and their use of film in educational process, with questions on conditions for film screenings in schools and uh, the availability of uh, films uh, for their use. Uh, so let's see. Uh, what are uh, the outcomes? But before that, we have to say uh, that the research took place in 2019. Uh, we created questionnaires that uh, asked children and the youngs between 6 and 18 years old about their viewing habits, like what do they watch, how do they choose what to watch, and uh, where, they, where do they watch films. The questionnaires were distributed to five elementary and two high schools, and a part of questionnaires were, uh, was distributed uh, to Family Days Festival for Children, uh, which is happening in our Cineplex in Podgorica. Uh, and we got 889 valid questionnaires back, uh, with, which were uh, used for analysis. So, outcomes. Um, the main conclusion is that preferences change according to the age. Um, we divided the research in three groups, uh, from 6 to 10, from 11 to 14, and from 15 to 18 years old. And as you can see in this table, uh, the first two top answers uh, are presented, and it is clear that um, growing up and socialization factor influence the trends. Uh, for example, as expected, uh, you can see that parents recommend or choose for children uh, at the youngest age what to watch, while the main source of information at the older age are social networks. But uh, let's take a look into the main uh, findings and the most interesting points. Um, so, as I mentioned earlier, uh, parents are the main source of information to children between 6 and 10 years old. It is this green line, but we can see how uh, this green line is going downwards. Uh, and the orange one, which represents the social networks, is uh, going up. But the most interesting in this uh, table is uh, this bright blue line, uh, which represents uh, the recommendation from the teacher. And it is steady at the lowest level. When it comes to a medium or a venue where they watch films, uh, at the earliest age, uh, they prefer to or mainly watch uh, films on television. Uh, this yellow line, and the, uh, the ages between uh, 11 and 14 are the most regular cinema goers, while the older one uh, prefers watching, uh, watching films on the computer. Uh, where the question with whom uh, uh, correlates with the question of the most preferred medium, uh, because as you can see at the youngest age, uh, those who prefer to watch films on television are doing it mainly with the family, this gray line. Um, and those who watch it at the cinema are doing it uh, with friends or with the class, with friends from the class. And those who watch films on the computer are doing it alone. We also asked uh, them uh, why are they watching uh, films. And as you can see, uh, the excitement uh, is the main reason for all ages. And well, what we can see also is the group from uh, 11 to 14 years old uh, who prefer watching films in cinema. 
and with the friends from the uh, class are doing it because they think they are spending uh, a quality time with friends. And logically, we have a slight shift to the escapism as a reason uh, for the group of uh, young people who prefer to watch films alone and uh, on the computer. So uh, what we learned? Uh, well, uh, we saw that uh, there is a low involvement of teaching staff in recommending the films. So obviously teachers must be more involved. Uh, the crucial source of information are social networks. Uh, uh, well, we must uh, use social networks wisely uh, in uh, what uh, we want to promote to uh, children. Um, teenager loses, teenagers lose interest in going to uh, cinema. Well, uh, we must find a way to encourage teenagers, uh, teenagers to go to the cinema. And losing interest in cinema going correlates uh, with the fact that at that age, uh, you'd prefer watching films alone on the computer. And uh, maybe we need uh, first to identify reasons be uh, behind this trend. Um, for now, we think that it might be uh, piracy uh, or it might be the streaming platforms like Netflix, or it might be the price of the tickets and the whole price of the whole cinema experience. Uh, so, about next steps now we, when we have some findings, uh, what are our plans? Um, well, the result of the research uh, served to us as a guidance for creation of the strategy because they give a clear picture of the current situation uh, and of the youngest film's audience's preferences. Uh, the formation of which we want to influence through the educational process in order to have a film literate society in the near future. Uh, we are creating now the document uh, which will gather a list of specific activities and goals and uh, which we want to present to the newly established Ministry of Education, Science, Culture and Sport and to the Institute for Education. And we hope that uh, we will manage to make them understand the need for systematic action and the need for integration of the film as art in school curriculum. Uh, in the meantime, uh, the Film Center of Montenegro will continue with our, uh, uh, or will undertake specific uh, activities such as um, uh, ensuring the film rights and creating a digital film database. Uh, we are in the process of collecting uh, age-appropriate films and we also make arrangements to use the ones that are already available in Europe, like European Film Factory. Uh, we want also to create a, a special digital database of Montenegrin films in collaboration with Montenegrin Cinematheque. Uh, which we want to, to create this database to be available uh, for screenings in schools. Mm because this research also showed us uh, a clear lack in knowledge of Montenegrin uh, cinema. Uh, also, we want to create teaching and learning materials and to provide training for, the, for teaching staff and future film educators, which we want, to, uh, we want to do in collaboration with our experienced uh, partners from the region and to use this MOOC uh, website uh, uh, when, when translated into creation. And then we want to start uh, creating a specific curricula uh, that can be integrated into primary and secondary school programs. And uh, what is important for a wider picture uh, in Montenegro is translation and adaptation of films for children and youth in Montenegrin language. And uh, also the support for uh, continuous research in the field of film art and uh, translation of contemporary uh, film literature. So, I hope I wasn't too fast. Uh, I was trying to, to say uh, the many things we prepared. prepared. So, uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Sanya. I'm really impressed how you are covering all areas of uh, film education, from cinema, training, educating uh, educators, practitioners. So, it's really <clears throat> the whole range of the sector, which it's really great for a long-term uh, 
um, and sustainable models. Um, I already have so many questions, but we'll go uh, into that um, later on. Um, so, yeah, let's jump jump now to Slovenia. Oh, sorry, my um, host stopped my video. Mm, I have the privilege that Bojan will start sharing my screen. So can you uh, start that now? Thank you. So yeah, before uh, let's jump uh, to Slovenia uh, to see uh, how the film education has been developing in the in the last decade. But I won't do it chronologically, um, not to lose your attention. Attention, maybe. Um, instead, I will play with some building blocks. Um, so, yeah, I will argue based on our uh, experience in Kino Dvor that there are some non negotiable building blocks um, for any kind of long term program um, in cultural education or film education. Um, I will highlight a few of, the, of them that I think are, are crucial, um, and then I will mirror the infra infrastructure from our local community to the national level um, to see what is there and what is um, perhaps um, missing. So let's have a look, so this one, yeah, um, into our local environment. Um, we, we have a founder, we were founded by the municipality of Ljubljana that has written film education in our funding uh, document and has ma made a legal commitment to continuous uh, funding. Then we have a cinema uh, with a management that is constantly pushing film education um, to forefront, including it in all strategic documents. And we have a team that is delivering and further developing the film education program. Uh, the program can only be designed with a wide network of partners, distributors, festivals, wider film and cinema community, film practitioners, uh, teachers, and they're the third building block. Um, I won't go deeper into our program, but I would just like to highlight one thing that I think it does have a strategic um, value. Our film education program, it's not only about um, educating about film or deepening the understanding of film as an art form but also about young audience uh, development it is about nourishing maintaining and developing young film lovers and cinema goers so here we have the fourth uh, building block the audiences the families with children teens as independent cinema goers and of course we have schools um, as schools are very important audience and also a strategic partner um, for ensuring accessibility, we see uh, them as a fifth uh, building block. Um, um, we have developed a long-term program for kindergartens and schools that enable children to visit cinema three times during formal uh, schooling. Uh, this program is additionally supported by the municipality of Ljubljana and exactly this program was extremely important for us in overcoming the gap created by the pandemic. Barbara was, was already uh, talking about um, it yesterday. So now we have um, five building blocks. Mm, circles that form a base or I rather think a nest for film education. Uh, it started at the end of 2008 and has been grow, uh, growing ever uh, since. During a decade we increased the variety uh, of programs that Barbara already mentioned yesterday. Um, I know the numbers are just one of the uh, indicators of the development, maybe mm, quite a flat one, but anyway to give you mm, a feeling uh, we started with uh, 13,000 visitors in 2009. That was the, f the first whole year because we uh, opened the cinema um, at the very end of 2008. This is the visitors of Young Audiences program. And uh, in the last normal year in 2019, we had 40,000 of them. Uh, but as I said before, this story could um, not be possible without building blocks. If just one of these uh, was missing, the story would be um, a completely different one. As Barbara uh, pointed out yesterday, we are doing everything that we can to keep the connection 
connections between these building blocks, different strategic uh, partners looking for comprehensive solutions. Of course, we need to rethink uh, what are the possible, the best possible ways of cooperation now that the um, reality is changing, but we need the nest. None of us can do it um, on its own. Uh, because of these existing uh, conditions, we've been able to support and actively participate in the different national uh, initiatives. So let's move now to the national level and delete <clears throat> all of this but keep the circles and um, try to fill them all in. Let's start with cinemas. We have the Slovenian Art Cinema Association with uh, 29 cinemas across the country. We also have a Slovenian Cinematheque. Also on the national level, we can find a wide network of partners. All of them are also on the national level. level. They're here to co-create quality um, film education programs. We also have audiences on the national level. Slovenian Art Cinema Association is revitalizing cinema going habits on the national level. We can see um, growth um, and film education programs are bringing one quarter of that um, number. Let's look at the circle where we previously had the local government and now we will be looking at the national one. Here we have a Ministry of Culture and Ministry of Education. They have been working in the uh, synergy, putting a lot of effort in raising awareness on the importance of film education on a national level. Uh, one of the national initiatives is, for example, an annual e uh, event dedicated to cultural education, um, where film education is uh, playing an important part of it. Um, in the last dec decade, film education was always included um, in the national program uh, for, for culture, uh, the main strategic document on the national level. But the biggest achievement since today was the development of the national strategy of, de of the development of um, film education. A few years before the strategy, it was uh, adopted in 2016, we had a national survey that showed that film is one of the most desired forms. So here I can refer to what Sanya was saying about the excitement of uh, students, but the le least present uh, in schools. So the main focus of the strategy is the incorporation of film education into the school um, uh, curriculum. It is not that wide as in the case of uh, Montenegro. Um, now we have an optional subject of film education in primary and secondary schools. Um, and in this school year, uh, which is the second school year that pupils can take part in it, um, we can see some really encouraging um, numbers. We have uh, 132 schools, um, uh, in, uh, um, including the uh, subject in their uh, programs, and we have 40, uh, five, uh, 455 schools um, in Slovenia. But the subject is still optional and the decision for including it in the school program lies completely on the school management and enthusiasm of uh, teachers but uh, luckily uh, there are a lot of things going on also outside the subject wait outside the subject um in 2019, 80, 000, uh, more than 80,000 admissions on the schools. We had 80, 000, uh, more than 80,000 admissions on the school screening across Slovenia. This is the data from the Art Cinema Association. Um, one of the driving forces for the numbers of included students uh, is definitely the third national film education program founded, uh, funded by the Ministry uh, of Culture. The program is aimed at training teachers of primary school. Uh, this is run by um, Art Cinema Association and teachers of secondary schools uh, uh, run by the Slovenian uh, Cinematheque. During the five years, they have delivered training courses for approximately uh, 1,500 um, teachers. So also on the national level, we have projects that are funded by the national uh, government and are trying to establish a long-term relationship uh, with the schools. 
But after five years, the program is coming to an end this summer with no prospect of uh, sufficient funding. And here we come to challenges and missing parts on, uh, on the national level. Um, I assume it's quite obvious on the national level, we still don't have a systemic solution that would provide a continuous funding. Um, we started a very interesting debate yesterday whether this should be public or private. Most probably a combination uh, would be a success. But nevertheless, we need um, it as we are constantly facing um, disruptions. The only financial support that we do have on the national level, yesterday we had Natasha from Slovenian Film Center, is the annual public call uh, by Slovenian Film Center that supports um, smaller projects but that is not enough for a long-term development of quality, uh, inclusive and um, accessible film education program on the, on the national level. I would like to stress another issue that we have, and that is the accessibility of quality film titles for young audiences. Children need to have, audi uh, need to have access to diverse films from across the world, but uh, in their native language dubbed or, uh, or, or subtitle, depending on their age, and preferably on the big screen of their local cinema. Again, I'm referring to Barbara. Uh, uh, she yesterday um, so lovely said that films uh, do need love, but they also need distributors as well. However, the distribution of film um, for young audiences is more or less uh, dependent on the economic logic of supply and um, demand. And we all know that quality titles for uh, young audiences are no blockbusters. So as much as we have uh, reasons to celebrate, they're, 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 we have a lot of achievements, uh, but we are not completely there yet. And the results that we have achieved uh, so far can also diminish. Uh, the problems that I've been mentioning, we've had them all before the pandemic and the pandemic uh, will only make uh, them bigger and they will influence film education on all levels, also um, the, local not, uh, the local one. Uh, but we need film education because without film education there is no vibrant um, film culture. And if we agree with what is written in the Slovenian national uh, strategy that film education influences the social, ethical, intellectual, multicultural and emotional integrity of every individual and fosters critical thinking, well, then today we need it more than ever. Um, thank you. That was my presentation. Boyan will stop, share my screen and we'll move uh, to the north of uh, Europe, to Denmark. Charlotte, uh, would you continue with presenting um, your case study, your example? Charlotte, can you start your video on? Yes. Hello. 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 Nice to see you. I'm here. Nice again. to see you. Thank you so uh, much. So the floor is yours. I'll just turn off my video. Okay. Thank you very much. So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Charlotte Giese. I'm from the Danish Film Institute and I'm also a part of the Framework Group. Uh, what uh, Ian presented this morning and I hope you're still alive after one hour and ten minutes now with uh, three other PowerPoints. I will, I have another ten minutes to speak to you before we start to discuss. Thank you for inviting me and, uh, and also I want to say for your efforts to make this digital um, in a digital version, the seminar in a digital version. I had really been looking forward to go to Slovenia last year, but I shall get there one day. And I was really inspired by being in the region, at least online yesterday. I think there was a lot of uh, food for thought. Okay, so I will share my screen now. Do you see it? It's clear? Uh, we can see it, yes. Everything's perfect. That's good, thank you. So I have 10 minutes to share the Danish story. So here we go. Who are we? 
The Danish Film Institute is actually a national agency or the national agency under Ministry of Culture. We fund and we promote Danish film and cinema culture as well. And we are located in the very heart of Copenhagen and we have national responsibility. Yesterday, Errol mentioned the Y Foundation, which is also located in the same house. It's not part of DFI, but we work closely together with them. So first, a little bit of history, uh, which is really important for how we approach film education today. In 1982, a film act was implemented by the Ministry of Culture. It was dedicating 25% of all government subsidy funds to film production for children and young people. And this was really important because it secured that we had a new volume of Danish films, short documentary and features every year. Besides that, we also have a strong and long tradition for children's culture. And films have actually been distributed to schools since the 50s through National Film Board of Denmark. Uh, and furthermore, Denmark's Broadcasting Corporation, our main TV channel, has been a real hothouse for cutting edge experiments and for charming innovation. That meant a lot for Danish films, also for young people. So we do build on a long tradition and our story did not start out of the blue. When the Ministry of Culture launched an ambitious strategy for children and young people in 1996, it was the kickoff for DFI to make our own strategy and also to, do, to make a department to do the job. And here I talk about film education. So you can say that our management at Danish Film Institute took a giant leap, leap to, to believe in film education and to prioritize and also to fund it uh, in a sustainable way. From a helicopter perspective, you can say that it was a holistic plan. It was linking film production, film distribution and film education. And our CEO at the time, who was really supportive uh, for film education, Mr. Henning Kammer, he had a very precise and short way of saying why we did so. If we lose the next generation, we lose everything. So in the first years of our development, we spent time to develop a vision, which has been a key guidance for us. It's really simple and it goes that we want every child and young person to be able to experience, understand, and create film. And it's quite close to the three Cs that Ian mentioned earlier in the framework. Uh, we do have a blended approach to film education. It's from film as an art form and film literacy to film as a cross-curricular tool and a tool for creative expression. Also for personal development, as well as for global understanding. So it's all these big words. We also aim to follow track with the next generation in contemporary society. They do not limit their concept of film to the films that are often part of film education. So we also work with social media now, visual storytelling in social media, and with webisodes and TV series, with children's own content and so on. Okay, next step. In the beginning, in 1998, we were only two people. And we gradually, throughout the years, grew to 10 members of staff with different skills and profiles. So it took us years to develop our approach uh, and our infrastructure. We initiated small-scale, short-term projects, and then we experimented, we failed, and we learned and if the projects turned out to be a success, we turned them into big scale, long-term programs with a nationwide outreach. Now we do have a solid foundation, but the next generation and the, next uh, and the new technologies are really fast movers. So we have to keep, keep up and challenge ourselves by talking to our users, 
staying in touch with them and also by involving ourselves in European cooperation so we don't get caught up in our own little bubble and way, ways of doing things. And then we would get nowhere without partnerships, which has also been mentioned so many times yesterday and today. We have to uh, partner up with organizations, cinemas, municip municipalities and schools, of course, and other key stakeholders. We will have no partnership. Uh, if we have no partnerships, we will have no outreach. So the second part of my presentation is actually a short presentation of our five main programs. Uh, it's not the only things we do, but it's the, the, main, uh, the main programs. So one of uh, our first interventions was actually to create an international film festival for children and young people. It was called Busta, and it's still running on the 2020 20 year now. Uh, and this was soon followed by a school cinema program. After a lot of hard work, it started to grow. And now I would say almost every cinema in every municipality of our small nation is hosting events for primary and secondary schools. I included a slide with numbers, uh, just like uh, you did Siva. Um, the importance here is not so much the number itself, but the rise that we started with 30,000 audiences back in 2001, 2001, and now we have 250,000 uh, audiences. And our country may be important to know that Denmark has a population of 5.6 something million people. <clears throat> So besides the cinema program uh, that is really cinema oriented, um, we started some years ago to say, okay, now the technological development uh, has really been moving forward. So we were encouraged to develop a streaming platform. Because DFI uh, by ourselves, we own the non-exclusive and the non-commercial rights to all the short and documentary films, which are supported by us, by DFI. That, that meant that we had a strong base of films to begin with, but only Danish films. Then we have added, uh, we have bought a lot of films uh, throughout the years, and we also buy feature films now. So it's become a rich uh, and diverse uh, catalog with a more international approach. Uh, so you have to start somewhere. We started very small, step by step, adding titles and adding, as important, all the study guides and educational re resources, which is, I think, yeah, as I said, as important as the films themselves. And again, to the numbers. So we started in 2008 with 60,000 streams of films per year, and now we have 1.2 million streams in 2020, but important to say that we had a 40% rise during the corona time. Uh, and as important as the numbers of streams, it's maybe important to say that 90% of all the schools have access to this uh, streaming site and every child can use it also for homeschooling. And most children, not all, but most children here do have their own laptops or computers. Um, okay, and then a few words about the preschool cinema program. I was listening careful to what you said even uh, yesterday about the preschool. Some years ago, our ministry pointed at the need to do more for preschoolers. So we designed a program for them, a cinema program. Uh, and we distribute this program in partnership with the Danish children's film clubs around the country. And for many preschoolers, this, this uh, is really the first uh, cinema experience um, in their lives. Um, and um, coming to the numbers, yeah, again, the same, a good rise from 19,500 uh, audiences in 07, and now we have around 90,000 audiences. 
So from a cinema program for preschoolers, I, a few words on a, a new digital platform streaming site we have uh, innovated for use directly in the kindergarten. Um, this is very linked to the pedagogical curricula. Um, we spent years to develop the concept in close contact with users, and most of them had, had um, absolutely no tradition, no skills, and sometimes, or quite often, no trust in film education. So, so this was a much more complicated target group than the schools have been for us. But we are not giving up. We are very patient and we keep going. What we have learned is, or what, what, what research showed us was that an art early start really matters. And the core approach is creativity and the active use of film instead of the passive use of film and the cooperative and playful pedagogy. And numbers, it's still, it's still just opened last year or in 19, we had 6,600 6, streams first year and 9,800 streams here. So this, was, this will be slowly, slowly, step-by-step step development, which is fine. So a last thing, the different, uh, the, we at the Cinematheque in Copenhagen, we have a live on location film studio called Filmex at the Cinematheque in Copenhagen, yes. Uh, it's a physical setting with, um, that has uh, for primary and secondary schools. We do invite one school class at a time. They come prepared with a script and they are divided in teams and then supported by our staff. They experience all phases of film production, so including script, shooting, and editing. And in its, uh, so they make uh, a short film in uh, two to three hours' time, depending on their age. Um, and we are now in the process of having or trying to uh, establish more studios with regional partners in other cities. And we have yearly 10,000 visitors per year that is equivalent to the capacity that we have. Before I end, I would like to stress that um, it, um, it's important to say that film education in Denmark is not definitely not only executed by us, by Danish Film Institute. There are numerous very experienced and acknowledged organizations and practitioners in the field. We work together with most of them for common benefit and we have established a national network which meets twice a year uh, and DFI supports some of these stakeholders with financial grants. And my last slide, it should have actually said thank you, it says the end but it's not the end but it, I will say just one word about navigation in times of the pandem pandemic. We experienced that we have become so much better at making webinars and online conferences and streaming sites, like all of you, while we struggle with cinemas and film studios closed down. Um, but I think um, uh, that we, we have no idea how the future, what it will look like, but I still think we should lean to find out how to to blend in all the stuff that we have also learned throughout this very crazy year. And then hope for the best and be patient and look at the bright side. Um, I'm still positive. And um, I would like to, to add that actually, if you look at our cinema program and our online activities that have been running for years, they, we do not see them as comp uh, competitors. Uh, they actually both, they're growing, both of them, in parallel tracks. And I think they support each other really well. But I know we've been through a pandemic, so we don't know what the future will look like. But I think we should, uh, let's stay positive. And thank you for inviting me and uh, looking forward to the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you, Charlotte. Um, just stay with your video on and we can bring Sanya also. Can you um, turn on your video so we can have a discussion also? Um, I'll just start 
um, with the first question, and then we'll bring in the questions from, from the um, participants, our audience. Uh, we all touched a little bit of it, but maybe it would be really nice to make it really clear why do we need um, the strategy? What, what do we gain from it? What, what are the benefits of having a clear vision and a strategy in the field of film education? Um, maybe, I don't know which one of you would like to start. Maybe you, maybe. Sandra? One, yeah. <laughs> you, Charlotte, because you have so much experience, yeah. No, I, I'm, I think what's interesting from what you said, because you're actually going to design a strategy, as I understand, and you started to ask the users, which I think is a really nice approach. It was very inspiring. Uh, so I, I think what we did, we did not really, we had a strategy in the Ministry of Culture telling us, now we have to do something in all areas of, uh, in all art areas. So we designed a strategy, or, or I would maybe call it an action plan from, from the beginning. But for us to have strategic thinking throughout the whole process have been really important. And then this very short vision, I don't know why, but it somehow helped us to keep thinking how to reach everybody out there. Because we made in the beginning all these wonderful little projects, which are re really important because I saw them as labs experimental labs to understand what is working, what is not working. But then remember to find out how can you stretch and expand these projects to become programs that every child can benefit from. And because we, we are a national film institute, we also have to do that. We cannot stay in one region or in one cinema. We have to go out there. But I think the strategic thinking, if you don't have a written strategy, even strategic thinking will help you. But of course, a strategy from your institution, from your government, from your ministry or your own organization. It's a good piece of work, uh, I think. I think it's worth it. Mm. Sanya, would you like to add something? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, well, uh, for us, uh, first we set uh, the goal. And the goal is uh, provided through this national program that uh, I mentioned earlier. And uh, it is to develop film audience and to uh, have a film literate society in the near future. And we have to do that through this um, uh, strategy uh, because uh, what we have now uh, are a bunch of quality quality uh, programs, uh, educational programs for uh, children in uh, primary and secondary schools. Uh, we don't have any program yet for kindergarten, but we want to develop that also. And uh, the Film Center of Montenegro support those uh, projects. Uh, but what we want is a kind of uh, approval from the government that uh, these things uh, need uh, to be done and to have some uh, formal channels uh, through uh, schools uh, where uh, our children gain uh, wide education. Uh, they gain uh, education in music, in literature, and why not in film? So uh, we want to make it formal. That is why we really need this uh, strateg strateg strategic thinking, sorry, as uh, Charlotte said. And uh, we really want uh, the government to hear us and to understand why we need this. Mm. So um, we started uh, from this research in order to see uh, how uh, literate our children are right now and what we need to do to uh, make it uh, on a higher level. Mm -hmm. So it's the development and also, I mean, we are starting with the vision, the mission, and then the development of this vision yeah. and mission. One of the things that I think it's really important when we're talking about why the strategy is important, and Edita mentioned it yesterday uh, when we had a a little non-formal gathering, and Mark also mentioned it in on the conference in Rijeka, the, this um, uh, coordination of different sectors, uh, because then you can also coordinate different interests and different potentials uh, 
uh, that all put the effort in the realizing this vision and making this vision a reality. And also one of the things that Ian said, I, I wrote it down because um, uh, we tend to forget that when we have national or any kind of uh, funding opportunities, can be also private, but um, with um, heading the direction where we are putting our funds, we are um, setting the direction in which uh, different organizations are going and we are ha if we do have a national strategy then everything uh, it goes in the in the same in the same direction without losing the um uh the the differences between different approaches or uh different uh, organizations but just heading into this mission, whatever it is, we can name it like everybody should be film literate. Uh, we have a vision that everybody has, every child has uh, access to quality film education, but everything goes in one direction. I think that's really, it's not, it's not, um, uh, that, well, yeah, like in just not coordinated. Yes. Um, okay, maybe we can bring Anya in. I think uh, there are some questions. Um, so actually, not so much questions as uh, more uh, congratulations to all three of you, Jiva, Charlotte, and uh, Anya, for your presentations and uh, very much uh, your inspiring words. Uh, so Ivana is also, also asking Sanya for your email. Mm -hmm. um, and now let me scroll to uh, the one actual question we have. Uh, so from Jelena to Jiva, how many people are employed in Kinodvor for realization of film education programs and how many employees in total Kinodvor has? Uh, I believe it's uh, all together is 16 of us, something like that. And in the film education program, it's uh, three of us working uh, constantly on the program of film education and young audiences. But then we have a lot of um, external collaborators bringing different expertise uh, into, into our work. Um, yeah, that's, these are the numbers. Um, we started with, uh, I think it was half of a person at the beginning in 2008 and now it's it's um, growing as well from this um, aspect maybe i have um one one question um because your strategies are really covering as i commented before when sanya was uh, finished with her presentation uh, the the whole sector of it and I was wondering because both of you mentioned the database uh, um, I mean Sanya you're going to develop it and Charlotte you already have the the platform that is bringing uh, films into the school schools I think it's really really important that we I think in film education more uh, children are watching films in different settings that is only uh, it's a benefit that encourages the the film education and their literacy their understanding is widening their horizons but I was wondering do you also include the, um, the cinema aspect into this um, into this uh, I, it's like a package when you have content bringing into the schools and then it's also connected to the cinema going or how do you see because now we are really having a dilemma should we have a like a package of films that we give to schools but then that it's um it's not a substitution but it's it's like different direction to the cinema or the film culture cinema culture so how can we intertwine it that it's really um just enhancing all the levels of film education. Shall I try to say what, how, how we see it? Um, I, I think for us, it's, it's really, um, it's two, it's parallel and connected tracks. Mm. We started with a film festival to say it very fast. We started with a film festival and then a school cinema program, and then decided to also give access to content and resources in the classroom, directly in the classroom, to reach more people uh, and, and make sure that more people see more films throughout the year. So we see it as a blended approach mm -hmm. and we don't see them as, as competing each other. Um, maybe I'm not sure if that's uh, answering your question, but, but uh, and on one more point is that all the resources 
for the cinema program, they are located at the streaming site. So you can say we, we send people out to the cinema and prepare them to what they're going to see and they come back to their classroom. Mm -hmm. They can open their resources and tasks and so on at the website where they can see more films and maybe even the same film again. Mm -hmm. So we try to connect mm -hmm. the cinema program with the online streaming program. Mm -hmm. We have 2000 titles at the streaming site mm -hmm. uh, and we have a number of new films each year, but I think it's not so much the number of titles. I think even with 10 titles, you're still, you're fresh to go. I mean, yeah. It, yeah. So I think it's the connection between yeah. the two. Yeah. No, I was just uh, wondering the concrete um, uh, programs and steps that you are doing in the collaborating them. So you have a platform that is combining and encouraging uh, people also to go to the cinema. So it's linking yes. together. Yeah. And Sanya, in your uh, case? Yes, uh, we, we think that cinemas and schools uh, must cooperate in film education. Uh, and uh, we, uh, yes, we, we, we thought of this uh, film database uh, basis to, to be provided to schools for uh, screenings. Uh, but uh, also we, uh, like I stated, with this digitization of uh, film theaters in uh, Montenegro, uh, Film Center wanted to oblige them uh, in a manner uh, that uh, cinemas cooperate with um, uh, schools and to, uh, to uh, uh, make collaboration with schools so uh, teachers can bring children to uh, the cinema to have all cinema experience and of course watch a quality film. That is the 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 idea. And uh, in Podgorica uh, now, a Montenegrin Cinematic uh, uh, has this new building, and it also has this uh, cinema theater, uh, small cinema theater within. Uh, so uh, it will be used uh, in those uh, purposes. Uh, mainly for schools to bring children to watch uh, some quality films. Mm -hmm. That is the idea. And maybe in that way, we can use this, uh, this uh, film online database that we wanted to provide for schools. Mm -hmm. One of the things I think we didn't mention um, is um, what about, it, it concerns the access um, and also the funding. Um, do you offer to schools parts or the whole program free of charge so that you ensure uh, ensure the accessibility or how it is um, funded uh, funded well in this uh, in this way how we imagined it because it is not happening yet but uh, we hope it will be soon uh, we uh, we want to support those projects and we want to to provide uh, for them uh, everything films mm -hmm and accessibility, of course, to, to the cinemas. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is our help in, in uh, easing the, the way for teachers, both for teachers and for cinemas uh, in, in uh, these, our, yeah, in film education and developing uh, film literacy among young mm -hmm. people. And it's uh, public funds. Yes, public funds, of course. I was, uh, I, did I understood right, the ministry, you, ha you have it combined, education and culture? Yes, since We'll see if it's going to go year, yeah. easier than in the... Yeah, uh, we're yeah. lucky. <laughs> we hope so, yeah. yeah. Um, Charlotte, can you just uh, uh, answer the question regarding the, is it free of charge? And then we'll bring some questions from Uda. Yeah, yeah. of course. I, the, for the preschoolers in cinema, it's, uh, it's uh, for free. Uh, and also our app, the streaming site is free. The, the streaming site for schools with content, it's, uh, they, each school pay a small annual fee, mm -hmm. uh, um, to, to, but, but nobody complains. It's very, it's really very low and very, very fair. So it's what they, what, what they can do. And then for the school cinema program, it's a mix, uh, the, the school pays a little per child, but it's very small fee again. And then it's the municipality and the distributors giving, you know, allowing uh, maybe extra good prices, fair prices for the screening of the films and so on. It's a little bit different uh, business models in each municipality because it's very regional 
uh, structured. So, so, but it's, yeah. So it's a combination. Yes. Okay. But we are, we are not, we are not ma making money. We cannot make money on this. We are not, I mean, we are national. We are funded by the state, the government. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anya? Mm -hmm. Uh, so we have a question for Charlotte. Uh, is DFI preparing all this content, so selection of films, materials, festivals, communication and educating teacher, or predominantly coordinating the process? Uh, I think I have, it's here. Um, uh, no, I can't. Please, please. Uh, so if we are doing all this or we are coordinating all this, is that the question? So, yeah, if you are doing or coordinating, where do you have a bigger role? Yeah, uh, the D Danish Film Institute, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, yeah, I think, no, actually, these, the five programs I mentioned here, we are, we have developed them and we are operating them. So we are, we are doing uh, not everything here because we do it in partnerships with others, but it's sort of our content and our brands our products, you can say. And then other people, other organizations have other kind of activities. But here we are, we are, we are doing this uh, ourselves and then we work with municipalities uh, and cinemas and schools to get it out there. I hope that's answering. Uh, okay, so um, another question for all of you from Ian. Uh, could you define their under your understanding of a term quality film? That's a real Ian one. That's, a, yeah, <laughs> of a quality film? Yes. I think from, if I can, I, I think I would say for me, it's important it has some artistic ambitions that you can feel it. And I, I find when we talk about children and young people that for me, it must be, um, it's welcome to have some cutting edge elements uh, of surprise and that it should be made in from, from a child perspective. Uh, that's important for me, but nobody can answer that question. So let's ask Ian afterwards, but thank so you still for asking. It's a very difficult one. I would mm. maybe add that it's, um, going beyond the uh, things that we already know, the cliches and stereotypes uh, that it's, you know, like a surprise or the edge thing. And also, I think it's really important that um, it is done from the, not maybe the child, pers uh, child perspective, of course, but also uh, that it's um, bringing the topics in a way that children can relate. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so, but there are so many elements and different aspects what a quality film is. I would say, I mean, maybe it's, um, I don't know, it, it's not provocative, but, um, you know, for film education, I think it's really good that we just watch, of course, when we are having the publicly funded programs, we are including quality films. But when um, somebody asks me, well, what should teenagers or children watch? Just as many films as you can see. But Because also when you see something um, that it's maybe not of that quality, you just sharpen your taste and your critical view. You can compare things, you know? Um, so I think it's the variety. It's so important when we are talking about the film education. Um, so, yeah. Any other questions? Sanya. Oh, no, Sanya, well, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Sanya. I'm sorry. I have uh, nothing to add, but to agree uh, with uh, you too. And uh, for us, it is important in uh, this way to ensure the, uh, that children watch uh, uh, much more uh, European films because we have an obvious problem with that. Uh, because if we if they go to Cinemaplex in Podgorica, which is uh, right now the only uh, movie theater in Podgorica, they will watch um, those mainstream uh, films that uh, usually comes from the United States, which is not bad, but they, they, they don't have a chance to watch European films. So I will add that to this uh, quality film uh, definition, if possible. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Uh, so maybe another question for Charlotte. Um, we were talking about films and how to expand them in different and uh, decentralized systems. So how do you reach the families that are not living in the big cities and uh, uh, maybe do not know the importance of film literacy and quality movies? A question from Tadeo. Yeah, thank you for, for that's a very good question. We do not actually approach families directly. Our, our, I think our strategy has been to, to, to go for the schools because then we know we will reach the volume, the masses uh, of children. And, and uh, so that's what we mainly do. And, and it's important for us that we are out there in every corner of the country. Uh, and we know actually that 25% of the children Uh, uh, have never been in a cinema before. Uh, so this, uh, even if they are in grade seven or eight, uh, it's their first time. Um, and that was also the reason for us to make streaming sites uh, for preschoolers to really reach every corner because we can't go out there and there are not cinemas in every corner. So we have to combine this. It's one way to, to be more inclusive, you can say, actually although we want everybody to go to the cinema, but that's, uh, that's one way of doing it. But we are not addressing families directly in these film educational programs. Uh, so maybe another question for you from Barbara. Uh, how is defined the relation between DFI and cinemas? What are the cornerstones of cooperation? Yes, we um, we do uh, we do we do give some. We we are separate. You can say they are independent from us, but we can we support. We have financial grants for for some of the art house cinemas that are showing uh, like no mainstream programs. So we we support them, um, and we can also support like if you if you need a new cinema in a place they have no cinemas, we can maybe support their is the establishment or the first years and so on. So, but otherwise it's like, it, it's like separate, but, but we work together quite a lot and we take care not to compete with, uh, with them in any ways. Uh, our government is very, uh, you know, concerned about that, which they should be. So, but we use every cinema and we, we use almost all the cinemas in the country for our cinema program. So in that way we cooperate very closely with them. Yes. Um, I hope that's... Thank you. Hmm? I think we are um, coming to an end slowly. Maybe the last question, I don't know if it has an answer, but uh, maybe just an advice. What to do if we don't have yet the national uh, strategy or if we don't have, if there are countries who don't have the sustainable film educational model, what can we do Uh, in between which steps to take, what would be a good thing to do? I, I just want to say that, that, that we all have to start from somewhere, even if you start with one person, one film, one audience, one cinema hall, you start to do something and then build it up step by step. I mean, for, for us now, we have staff, we have a funding and so on but we started from, from very little. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's simply, I think one person also suggested that yesterday, instead of waiting for a strategy, waiting for the government to come ask you to do things, you should start doing things if you can at all or with, with support from other sources. And even without a, a strategy, you can still have an idea and, and have take action. So I think... Um, Yeah, and I think it's, it's patience. It's patience and then one step at a time. As long as the idea is good, the core is uh, well designed and well, yeah. So that's my small comment to that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sanya? We are also, we are also uh, continuing with our programs. And uh, I remember now that I didn't tell that uh, we proposed to uh, Ministry of Culture um, a uh, few days ago that uh, in this situation uh, uh, in order to save our cinemas uh, we can um, propose to schools also to uh, 
bring children to cinema because our cinemas are still open and uh, uh, there can be up to 50 people uh, in the same t at the same time. So teachers can bring the whole class to a film screening uh, and uh, for this, of course, lower prices of uh, the film tickets. So uh, maybe with uh, maybe that can become a praxis uh, once this is over, uh, and we will see if the ministry will uh, will say uh, will be positive about this proposal. Mm. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, we are coming really to to an end. Um, uh, with about half of you, we will we'll meet once more in the in the afternoon on the group sessions. Uh, so you need to use the second link again, the same one that you used uh, yesterday. Or if somebody else new is joining us, just use the second link you received via email. Um, and the afternoon session will be moderated by Edita Bilaver Galinets, a business consultant and co-founder of the non-profit organizations uh, organization Kids uh, Meet Art that is doing the Seven Continent program that yesterday was also presented by Ivana. So she will guide us into the wonderful world of strategy, explaining to us in even more detail why it is important and how to start designing our own, how to make the first, uh, the first concrete steps. We'll be uh, also um, doing some practical, practical work. Um, so um, yeah, with all the rest, uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, today we had 19 participants. Um, Again, uh, really a lot of us from different um, sectors of, of film education. And maybe I can finish with a final thought. Um, it really resonated with me, Charlotte, the graduality of um, and just being patient, taking uh, small steps, because I think we have, we, if we know something from this seminar that a lot of things are, are happening right now, even though that maybe we cannot be uh, together, we don't have social, we don't have events, but a lot of things are happening also online um, and uh, programs are uh, going on. We have a lot of motivation, we have a lot of eagerness, we have a lot of, um, a lot of expertise and we should just... Um, Keep going, as you said, uh, looking at the bright side um, of life and, and keep going uh, um, uh, gradually will come to um, su sustainable film educational models. Um, so um, thank you all. Um, with half thank of you, you we'll see you. Uh, in the afternoon. Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you, Sanya. Thank you all to, all, so to Ian and all the panelists uh, uh, from yesterday. Thank you all for being with us and um, have a lovely day. Thank you.